Hey everyone, welcome to another time lapse sketching tutorial. This video that you're watching, it's the condensed version of the full length tutorial I have made for my patrons. So if you want to watch the video at normal speed, you can consider supporting me on Patreon, where you will have access to tutorials like this, as well as the 100 over tutorials that I have made over the years. Today we will sketch the St. Joseph Cathedral that's located in Hanoi. You can download the reference photo from the video description below. So for this particular sketch, as usual, I would start by drawing the longest line first. There are two largest, sorry, the two largest object in this scene is actually the cathedral and the tree on the left. And this building, you can see the perspective, it's quite dynamic because there are a lot of tilted lines. The vertical lines are tilted because my camera is using a wide angle lens. In real life, those vertical lines, they are actually vertical. So uh, that's one thing to take note of when drawing from reference photo. Anyway, I'm just um, drawing based on the photo, so I may actually just um, copy the tilted vertical lines as they are. So I start out by drawing the longest vertical line first and divide the cathedral into three parts horizontally. So you can see the two towers, uh, they are of the same width and the middle section there, the one with the cross, it has the same width as one of the two towers. So I need to divide the towers into three parts horizontally. And for the height of the towers, I would divide them into five smaller parts so that I can draw the details within those parts later on. It will be easier to uh, draw big, divide the parts into smaller sections and then fill in the details within those sections. And here I've drawn the tree on the left side. I took this photo in such a way that there are overlapping elements. So the tree would actually overlap the cathedral, the people in front, the crowds in front, they would overlap the cathedral, and the cathedral would overlap the trees on the right side, and the uh, trees on the right side would overlap the buildings in the back. So this photo, this sketch, it has a lot of foreground and background element because uh, I wanted to draw it in such a way that you can get a sense of that. That's why I chose this spot to take my photo. So here I'm just filling in the little details. Now this pitch that I'm drawing on, this is an A5 size pitch, which is actually quite small. So I am not able to draw all the details. So whenever I don't have space to draw the details, I would just uh, leave them out. So you see those tiny vertical lines that I just drew? Those are actually windows, but because I don't have the space to draw the actual windows, I actually just use those vertical lines to represent the windows. And the doors at the bottom. Now, this photograph was taken with me standing at the left side of the church. So based on the perspective, um, you will be able to see the thickness of some windows for in the doors from a certain side. So here, for example, the thickness of the door, I mean the foreground and the background of the door, you'll be able to see the thickness on the right side, but not on the left side. Now when drawing people, um, it's actually kind of challenging in this case here, if you are drawing on location, because all these people will be moving around very often. So the trick is really to look for people who are just standing there and not moving, people who are waiting for their friends. Draw those stationary people first. Uh, get them onto your page first so that you can use them to get a sense of how big you can draw other people. And for people who are moving, well, it really takes practice. The more practice you have, the more you will be uh, the more you will be able to draw the people well based on your memory of them. And you'll be able to get the proportion right because you have drawn so many people, you will be able to remember how they actually look like. 
but sometimes it's very difficult for you to explain but you will know how they actually look like like where you should draw the end of the t-shirt how long the feet should be how big the head should be all this will come with practice or you can just draw based on what you see in front of you so all right so this is the completed pen and ink section uh, notice the tree on the left side the tree is uh, drawn in such a way that I can see the bottom of the tree because I have already planned the sketch in such a way that I want to show the whole tree and for the watercoloring part I started by painting the sky uh, I wet the paper first and then painted the sky with cobalt blue dip which is PB 74 I like this paint because it has a lot of beautiful granulation so I wanted to have the sky blend from blue into the white of the paper towards the bottom and I also painted over the cathedral you may notice which is alright because the cathedral is backlit later on when I paint over with this shade of grey the blue will not be noticeable anymore so after painting the sky, I painted the trees. The trees is just a mix of uh, Nico Azo yellow and Queen of Crydon magenta from Core watercolor. So this is a mix of PY150 and PR122. Now when coloring this sketch, I used a limited color palette so that I don't have to be too I don't have to think too much about color mixing because if I want a green, I will just use yellow and blue. If I want an orange, I can only use yellow and red. And if I need a purple, it's red and blue. And if I need a gray, I will just mix the three colors together. So it's very simple to mix colors when you are using a limited color palette. The only consideration when it comes to choosing colors is um, Let's say your scene has a lot of orange, in which case you may want to choose a limited color palette that would give you bright orange. So for this case here, this scene has a lot of green, a lot of grays. So I actually chose the palette that allows me to have vibrant greens. Uh, that is actually the primary uh, consideration when I'm choosing this palette. There's no orange, so it doesn't really matter whether or not you choose a bright, sorry, a warm or a cool red. So for the tree trunk, um, I painted over with an initial layer of a rather warm gray. And uh, just now you saw I painted over again with a second layer that's to make the tree trunk darker. In real life, you may notice that trees, uh, the leaves, the tree trunks, especially those that are under shadow, they are close to being black. And they have very strong contrast against uh, whatever that is behind them. In this case here, I still need to add some shadows to the leaves to make it darker. But later on, you will see in the final result, in the final painting that um, it's still not that dark but I guess it's okay here in this case because I wanted to show off the pen and ink lines so if you really need the extra contrast you can just like add a lot of paint and there are certain colors that you can use to create darker shades so here in addition to the three primary colors that I have mentioned earlier I also used Thalo Turquoise. Any of the Thalo colors uh, that you use, they are great for mixing into really dark values. So here for Thalo Turquoise, I added some of the red earlier to create a very dark uh, value green. This is used to paint the shadow areas. And also, I wanted to create a uh, a variety of edges like hard and soft edges so for the leaves when the wash was still wet I quickly cleaned my brush loaded it up with a tiny bit of clean water 
and went on to soften the edges uh, where the hard edges are for the trees for the leaves so you can see now it has a mixture of hard edge which uh, you can see with the darker leaves and then there are the softer edges where the colors would blend softly into the shadow or the shadows blending softly into the lighter areas of the tree so this sketch is almost done there's only so much I can talk about in this short video so if you want to learn more about urban sketching drawing and watercolor you can consider supporting me on patreon patreon is a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to support the artists that you like and it is with your support that I am able to create tutorials like this I have a lot of free tutorials on my YouTube channel. You can check out the playlist in the video description below. In addition to that, I also create many full-length tutorials for my patrons, for those who are interested to learn more about drawing and sketching. So thanks for watching today's video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Bye.